All right, well, August is National Breastfeeding Month. We're going to turn turn our attention here a little bit this morning. Yes, on this week's Mommy Monday, breastfeeding is not always easy, and so many new parents can actually benefit from the help of a lactation consultant. Daily Ann Hemmings, Hartford Hospital's Program Director for Maternal Health Equity, is here to tell us what kind of help is available. Good morning, Daily Ann. Thank morning. you so much for being here. Thank you. It's so great to be here. Your title is amazing. <laughs> Can you first of all tell me what what you actually do at Harvard Hospital? Right. I, don't, I don't. I've never heard of a title such as that. I appreciate that. I am the program director for maternal health equity. With what's happening nationwide, it was really important. Harvard saw it as such for us to have someone that was hyper focused on some of the issues that were happening with health disparities. Mm -hmm. So because there's the national crisis, but then there are also issues where. For instance, black women are three, to time, three times more likely to die than their white counterparts mm -hmm. um, with issues related to pregnancy. And so in my work, I'm very focused on what is kind of causing this to happen and what can we do to help and improve that. Now keep in mind, Harvard has been working on this kind of work for a long time. It's just now it allows for there to be a hyper focus specifically on the issues of disparities. And there's different tools that I use to help to look at that. Like for instance, the maternal health equity dashboard, which is used to kind of drill down to see based on the patients we see, what is it that we see as opportunities to improve mm. some of the issues? That's amazing what and have so you, needed. What have you been able to find just in, in your research? Yeah, for instance, we were able to find with NTSV C-sections, which this is um, Nola Paris term singleton vertex C-sections, ones that we hope could have, you know, happened as a vaginal delivery. We saw that for some, for those with higher BMI or higher body mass index, mm -hmm. that they were higher you know, risk of yeah. actually delivering via C-section. And we know that it's it's like a general, that the whole team is working to help to reduce that. We're promoting vaginal delivery and supporting mm -hmm. patients in the best way that we can. And so part of what we're looking at is what is contributing to the outcomes that we see. Mm -hmm. At least now we can have more informed conversation based on our specific patients. It's not solely based just on findings or article information. That's important, and especially when you're you know, relating it back to the population that you're you're servicing and, and, and taking care of. Um, and also, I, you know, it's funny, C-sections are one of those things I feel like you just hear so much more about. Yeah. And it's just so much more common. And yeah, that big question, why? Mm -hmm. Also, you know, we, we're we still learning more about breastfeeding. You know, yes. it's 2024, yet there's so much yes. to still learn about that. And it's such a um, individualized situation you're treating, it right? It is, it is. And even with breastfeeding, right, our dashboard is looking at that data as well. And we're seeing that there are some people who are faring better than others. And so with being intentional about providing education and support, because that's part of where some of the breakdown happens, is that there's some people that don't have the same level of education mm -hmm. or support or support, but that's part of the work that happens in a baby-friendly hospital, right? right? We look to provide that support and promote of breastfeeding. Well, and that was it's the, the fourth trimester, right? Postpartum care is so right. important. You want to make sure that uh, mothers are getting the care after birth as well as babies, right? Absolutely. So the continuing care you want to make sure that they're getting. Right, and we're fortunate to be in the state of Connecticut, <clears throat> excuse me, who have noticed and that this is an issue, of course, with like the Maternal Mortality Review Committee. Mm -hmm. We have data to show what's happening with mothers. And so with that, we're able to be truly intentional. But there's also been an expansion for the coverage for those who have Husky or state Medicaid to have support mm -hmm. up to a year postpartum. Which is fantastic. All right, let's focus on <clears throat> August 1st. It's a very big day um, in so yes. many communities and yes. we're promoting breastfeeding yes you know our grandmothers perhaps were told use the bottle use the bottle formula yeah. formula is it you don't need to breastfeed but now yeah. the narrative has switched so much so and we are learning more and being educated more I would say from yeah. the public sectors from hospitals around mm -hmm. the nation mm -hmm. about how crucial it is that we try breastfeeding first. Absolutely, breastfeeding, you know, one of the terms that's often said is breast is best. We know that there's circumstance where for some people they cannot breastfeed. So for those who choose to breastfeed, we definitely wanna support them in the best way that we can. And there's more literature that's come out too to share that 
the benefit of breastfeeding is not solely for the baby, right? That the mother also mm -hmm. benefits. Those who choose to um, breastfeed, they also benefit from this experience. What we're looking at this year is m helping to make it so that breastfeeding is looked at more as a family kind of mm. thing that's happening. It's not solely just the individual that choose to breastfeed and the baby, but it really impacts the entire unit. Yeah. So on August 2nd, when we have our event, which is gonna be at the Institute of Living, mm -hmm. right across from Hartford Hospital, yep. um, we're gonna have it outside and it's gonna be fully intended to be a family, f a family fair. Everyone should come, everyone enjoy, because at the end of the day, that person who's breastfeeding need the support from yeah, everyone around them. Absolutely. There can be challenges, and when you don't have the right support, it can make it really difficult. Yeah, it's, it can be a very isolating thing if you don't have that support, right. absolutely. So utilize your resources, utilize your community, absolutely. and head to the event on August 2nd. Yes, it's <laughs> at 11.30 at the IOL. Um, there's tons of resources that will be shared. Um, there's consultation and support that the hospital has to offer. And vendors, I oh, hear. Oh, yeah, a lot there's of great gonna be, things. Oh, Great everyone. vendors that are going to be there. So for questions and support that might be needed, it will definitely be there. It's going to be a fun day. Awesome. That is the plan. Dalian, thank you thank so you much so for all much. the information. Thank you. And just so you know, if you need another resource, we do have some episodes up right now. Mommy had unscripted the podcast about breastfeeding and so many other things, including uh, one that just dropped this morning about pre the preschool years. Do you have a kid going into preschool? The threes, the fours, oof, it could be a little, uh, little troublesome at times and you don't really know what to expect. So um, I'm speaking with the national parenting coach, Danielle Lindner, about that. So go check that out. It's available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever else you get your podcasts.